other teams have done, like Method Black picked up Swapsy so they could get more of that dampening edge. And now Wildcard Gaming could do the same here with Morrow. Chat, you okay? We saw 79% of people in chat voting for We Were Here. That would be a huge upset. Let's see if they can make everybody in chat happy. Maybe they just want to see Looney die. I'm not sure because Windwalker DK is pretty classic to train the healer. Wildcard Gaming, we're expecting it. And Windwalker Frostmage is a great pick into this composition. Yeah, we'll have to see if they can get it done. Looney in bare form for that leg sweep as Morrow is the target of choice. He activates the temporal shield, but if Mayline and Sunky can have high uptime on Morrow, it's going to be really difficult for Morrow to survive. And Looney's not going to be able to support him the same way with the defensive Cyclones as it will tax his mana quite a bit. So Wildcard Gaming, they're going to have to make a decision about what they want to do. You can see Looney, like Asgroth, using Innervate very early on so that he can get the most amount of Innervates in a fight to maintain his mana. Good efficiency on his part here, expecting a later match. Suniki, the target of choice at the moment here for Wildcard Gaming as Blizzo supports Morrow. Morrow tries to blink to safety, having that frozen orb snaring up both Mayline as well as the entire team. Suniki dropping that touch of death. He's ready to roll. Temporal Shield from Morrow soaks it all and will likely heal him back to full health. Great timing. Now Blizzo with the reverse, that triple leg sweep. Fists of Fury dealing devastation across the team, but Galon just seems to just be walking it off with no problem. Yep, no question about it. Morrow now looking for some Frost Bolts. It looks like Sunki's going to be the main target. Icy Banes does get pulled out by Morrow and forces out the Touch of Karma. Still, we were here. They're looking to get aggressive in this matchup. Stay on top of Morrow. Now a full Asphyxiate stun over on the Looney. Do they have the follow-up that they need to force out the first Ice Block? With no Iron Bark, Looney's going to have to put out a lot of mana in order to keep Morrow alive. All right, we are here playing for the safe strategy and going after Morrow, but they are starting to fall behind on mana versus Looney. Looney crossing the map as Galon likely is trying to set up to drink and regenerate his mana, so they need to try and move across and deny that. Galon, I believe, getting some mana back amidst all of this. Leg sweep now caught on Looney. He's going to wild charge back to Morrow and desperately try to line the site. We were here are going safely on Morrow, occasionally gripping Looney in and trying to attack him as well, trying to force Looney to put heal over time effects on multiple targets, expend more mana, maybe catch him off guard in a swap. They're playing a much more conservative strategy for Windwalker Death Knights. And if it doesn't work out, I'd like to see them go to a small map on game number two, rush down the healer, because so far, I, I'm not sure if it's going to. Yep, Blizzo is getting low as well. Mayline swapping over onto him. Morrow still just spamming out the polymorphs, but the, with, with the way Morrow's playing it right now, they don't have the most amount of pressure. Galen's mana is actually completely healthy, completely fine. Soonki, he has the touch of Pharma coming up back shortly. If they can force out the ice blocks, the cooldowns for the Windwalker Death Knight, they rotate so much quicker, and they could eventually pull out a lead. All right, Mayline's the target here, but before dampening, Death Knight likely to not go down. Gallon activates Way of the Crane. He's going to be doing tons of damage as we were here. Make a swap to Blizzo, trying to burst him down. That Gladiator safeguard procking the shield and saving him in time to activate Touch of Karma. But that was basically his entire defensive arsenal. And this is exactly what we were here need to do during their crowd control attempts. Switch to a target without life bloom and cause chaos. They were able to pull so much from Wildcard Gaming with a simple switch of target during their burst moment. A couple more moments like that, they may be able to net themselves a kill. Blizzo, though, looking for a kill of his own. Touch of Death rolling, about to explode. Gallon soaks it up with Life Cocoon absorbing that huge hit. But Looney now initiates crowd control. Suniki may need to try and run. Blizzo in hot pursuit. Ring of Peace knocks Blizzo away. Suniki catches a couple of heals and stays in the fight. Yes, yeah, Suniki will survive. He actually used his Touch of Karma very aggressively onto Blizzo, trying to Karma the Touch of Karma to redirect some of the damage and really push Blizzo over the edge. But unfortunately, not able to. Still, with the Diffuse Magic. With the fortifying brew, Suki should be fine as Blizzo gets gripped behind the pillar. Here's a lot of pressure. Ring of Peace does get dropped out. Blizzo out of line of sight. Looney trying to keep him up. Doesn't use the iron bark, just relying on that fortifying brew. And that's one of the things Wild Park Gaming they do so well. They don't overreact to the situation. They don't overcommit defensive cooldowns. Usually one is all you need. They, re they react to the damage completely appropriately, and that's why they're such a strong team. Although amidst all that pressure, Looney just said, okay. You guys can't stop me. I'm going to sit down, drink, regenerate mana. That blue bar maxed out as we move closer to dampening. That's a huge advantage now in favor of Wild Card Gaming. But Blizzle gets caught behind the corner. Looney moves forward to catch a couple of heals, managing to save Blizzle's powerful defensives. Now Blizzle launching an attack with his leg sweep. Gallon absorbs the hit with Life Cocoon. Well-timed defense on both sides as they continue swinging. 
Mayline the priority here for wildcard gaming. Already lots of defensive cooldowns. Well timed counter spell. Good placement. Wave of the crane gets activated defensively to stabilize the team. That cost Gallon a ton of mana now moving into dampening and puts Looney even further ahead. Hit double ice sweep on a Blizzo and Morrow, but Looney easily keeps them alive. Blizzo does get bursted down, but he is able to kite away. And with the support of Morrow and Looney, I think he's going to be a very difficult target to take down. If you notice the defensive cooldown choice from Blizzo, he actually opted to go for Diffuse Magic. Normally, you wouldn't see that. You'd go for the Damp and Harm against physical damage like the Death Knight and the Windwalker Monk. But Diffuse Magic, you get a lot of value out of it, especially from the Gladiator's Maledic Trinket. You can take that off, remove that healing reduction, and it ends up being a better defensive cooldown, even against teams like this. So if you're at home, definitely opt to look for the Diffuse Magic against the Gladiator's Mal that can save your life. Maro in trouble here. All three members right on top of him dealing tons of damage. Ice block forced here at 6% dampening. We were here showing signs of life against the Giants wild card gaming. Will they be able to pull off a victory though is now the next question. Wild card gaming obviously have a lot of compositions at their disposal deciding to drop down the Windwalker Frostmage. Typically a good answer into Death Knight melee cleaves but we were here seem to have the strategies nailed down and they've got lots of pressure. Maru on the ropes, Temporal Shield about to go off. It's a race against the clock, and Maru manages to win that one. And as dampening gets higher and higher, Mayline becomes a more vulnerable target. So look to see how he survives later into dampening. Looney looking to maybe secure some crowd control. And Gallon, they switch to Suniki, forcing some pressure onto him earlier on and trying to expend Gallon's mana to secure that advantage. But it's really quite a close race in terms of mana. There's not a significant edge still for Wildcard Gaming. Ring a piece from Blizzo, then a ring a piece from Suniki to knock him out. Counterplay with the ring of piece, the zone denial, it's high level from both of these teams. But right now, Morrow manages to escape. Suniki still all over him. Blizzo trying to back him up the best he can. Looney's mana is starting to equalize with Galoon once again. So although the rest of Druids are able to sneak off and drink, it seems like some of these other healers, like the rest of Shaman, like the Mistweaver Monk, they're able to sustain for a longer time. So Looney, he might have to consider going for a drink once again in this matchup. Galoon actually getting interrupted there. Malon getting low, Sunki getting low. Galoon uh, activating that um, Rising Sun Kick ability as Way of the Crane in order to heal up his team during the game, top them off off the back of Morrow's interrupt. But with that, he expends a lot of mana, but easily tops off his team. It's a race, that Temporal Shield, a couple seconds away from healing Morrow back to full, and he manages to stay in it. Mana still actually pretty even. Looney may need to try and go for another drink at 16% dampening to keep his team in the game because the pressure isn't going anywhere. Morrow's constantly retreating away and on the back foot from both Mayline and Suniki. Touch of death exploding on Suniki. He gets bursted. Life Cocoon will save him for now. Maledix flying in, absorbing more healing. Gallon expends even more mana with two members low on health and dampening ramping up. We can see the advantage that Wildcard Gaming were looking to take with this composition. They can attack two targets at at the same time between both Mayline and Suniki. Frozen Orb and Fists of Fury hitting multiple targets. Mayline starts to stabilize. Suniki's low on health but has Touch of Karma keeping him going. They then switch back to Mayline and Blizzo's damage has suddenly been cranked up immensely. Polymorph secured over on the Gallon. He has to use Glider's Medallion to break that to keep his team alive. Morrow still getting pressured constantly back and forth. Yep, Morrow getting lower. Could be the second ice block as he's forced into it with an incapacitate over on the Looney. And now this is not looking good for Morrow. Honestly, no ice blocks available for another three minutes. Although both Sunki and Mayline are getting low, Galoon might be able to top him off if he can save a little bit of mana for his way of the crane. But I don't know if he's going to ever be able to regenerate to that point. Life Cocoon gets forced out. An incapacitate going in from Blizzo onto Galoon. Ebon Bolt gets cast out from Morrow. Big pressure on Sunki, forced to port away. That buys Morrow a little bit of time to recover. Stabilizes HP. Looney's mana is doing a little bit better than Galoon now. And now we were here. This is not a good spot for them to be. All of them behind the pillar. Blizzo hitting them. Now Morrow actually, I think, blinked in. You got gripped in there. Still has both his blinks available to escape. But still, an all-in from We Were Here could close out the game and take down Morrow. Right, Looney activates Iron Bark before crowd control hits. Nice preemptive move on his part. His team takes no damage as a result, and it's really We Were Here that's still on the ropes. Blizzo doing tons of area of effect damage. All three members low, but Morrow with no ice blocks. It's a race to the finish at this point. Neither team with anything left to keep going, but Wildcard Gaming have all of the pressure with two members potentially going down. Mayline falls first. Wildcard Gaming with a well-executed composition strategy of them and guess what we are here 
Yep, they've got two monks. Wild card gaming. I think what's most important in this game for them is Maro and Looney need to not play on top of each other. So like Sid was saying, using the outside of the map to sort of kite, run, a, uh, run away. If Looney is on top of Maro, it's going to make it much too easy for Weaver here to get pressure on him. Having multiple pressure points as Windwalker Death Knight is definitely ideal as Looney does get gripped away. A bit of a miscommunication there. Ring of Peace got dropped out. Suniki managed to find the leg sweep on Looney. Then, Mayline gripped him through the Ring of Peace, and Suniki couldn't actually get there for any sort of damage, so that was nicely done by Blizzo, keeping Looney alive, but honestly, it was just a big mistake from we were here. I mean, they at least got Bark Skin from Looney, and they may be looking for more swaps to the healer. I, I feel like that strategy before dampening is a good idea. Maybe two minutes in the fight, you start targeting the mage and trying to get ice blocks for a kill and dampening, but before dampening, you go all out when you're most durable, your healing isn't reduced, maybe try and kill the healer. Now it seems like they've given up on that. Looney is definitely one of the most veteran healers in terms of being targeted down. He's going to make sure that he's 40 yards away at all times against the Death Knight to max range death grip, which can pull the target in. Mayline sees that, so he's going to jump down below. So Looney then has a decision to push up with his team or to stay as far back. I'm curious to see where Looney positions now that the Death Knight Mayline is trying to bring the fight to the bottom of the bridge. But so, so far, they haven't managed to pull him into any sort of position that Looney even needs to expose himself positionally. We see Icy Vein activated touch of karma immediately redirecting that damage ring of peace knocks Maro down to the side but it's the side that Looney's playing on at least now in range of death grip gallon cotton crowd control with that polymorph but really not too much damage just yet suniki opts to trade diffuse magic regardless looking to play it safe and more conservative However, I think against a team like Wildcard Gaming, if you play conservatively, Looney's going to walk all over you. Yeah, anytime Looney gets death gripped in, it's just a ring of peace immediately from Blizzo, which keeps him alive. And it's only really been having to use Barkskin in these exchanges. Suniki's still on top of him, but Looney's doing such a good job kiting right now. He's able to get away, toss some regrowths on himself, and he's going to be completely fine. But these swaps to Looney are taxing his mana a little bit. He's at around 80%, whereas Galoon, he's at 100% mana right now. He is chilling hard. Yeah, at this point, we are... We're here, have a pretty secure advantage. Mayline trying to chase down Looney, not able to stay on target, using the outside of the map to expose him. Suniki then gets swapped to, and he's actually very weak in this position, touching a couple of heals, but still not much. Gallon needs to get heals going. What's going on? Suniki jumps down in desperation and just gets taken out. Miscommunication, absolute chaos on Blade's Edge Arena. This is exactly what can backfire on this map. Demon Hunters, they have spectral sight, so they can activate this and see invisible targets, which is what a Restoration Druid is likely invisible while drinking. So Mayline has to be the team, or the member on the team, to stop Looney from resetting his mana. We've seen that Mistreaver and Rest of Shamans can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Druids without even drinking. So if they stop Looney from drinking, then it's likely to be the case that we were here. Still has a chance in this series to bring it back. Will Mayline swap over to Demon Hunter be enough here in what could be the match points they need to take? This is going down to lower bracket. Yeah, Looney sitting comfortably right now, healing through this damage. And actually, Netherwalk was activated by Mayline to keep himself alive. Uh, against the touch of death, so I guess Blizzard traded out his touch of death. Mayline just wanted to avoid that damage completely, and that might be the trades that these players are looking for. Instead of their healers healing through the damage, they just decided to trade out an immunit to save as much mana. Morrow now taking quite a bit of burst. The leg sweep over on the Looney. Morrow has to stay alive. He's got the Tigers left from Blizzard. Good support as he looks to kite away. Yeah, amazing evasive maneuvers there by Maro, managing to hold on to his ice block, but now pinned against the outside wall by that ring of peace. Usually a bit of a panic attack, but Blizzo took control of Mayline, disabled rooting him and preventing him from connecting. Find Maro time now to blink to safety. Looney catches a bash on a Mayline. Blizzo is going to connect, activating tons of damage here with that Fist of Fury. Mayline just going to walk away and walk it off. Mana Rift actually selected by Mayline as well to try and etch a mana lead for his team against this Restoration Druid Menace. This adaptation might be possible for We Were Here to pull off, but now Suniki getting swapped too. Gallon makes the trade, but even with Life Cocoon, they managed to crush right through that. And so far, this Demon Hunter switch, I think, is a lot better. I would have liked to see it in game number two. Yeah, it would have been nice. It seems to be working out so far. Looney with an Iron Bark on tomorrow during this like sweep. Nicely done reading that crowd control incoming. Ring of Peace gets used by Blizzo, oh. <laughs> preventing all incoming damage. Another two Ring of Pieces. Three Ring of Pieces on the game right now. All three monks looking to uh, 
deny as much zone as possible. Forcing Morrow back into some of that damage. I don't know if it's possible, but I kind of want to see it. A ring of peace on one side, ring of peace on the other, and turning the players into volleyballs and just pass them back and forth. Mayline actually could go down here <laughs> as we're on match point, and I'm trying to set up the most humorous situation. If they do it, I would just, in, I would love all of them so much if they could. Gallon actually falling behind on man mana despite Mayline running that mana rift, so it's not looking too good for We Are Here. Finally, some pressure on Morrow, but Looney just denies it all with Iron Bark, Swift Men combined together, tons of healing and damage reduction. Blizzo leads the charge here, activating Touch of Death, Fist of Fury. Gallon responds and makes a trade with Life Cocoon, but both healers negating the pressure of each other's teams. Looney, he's some far off corner in vacation, likely sitting down and regenerating mana with a drink. That Ring of Peace, not far enough over. And with this mana regeneration that Looney secured, he's back to full with a massive advantage. Yeah, he's feeling really happy. And Maro on the Frost Mage, what he's doing, his main objective in this game is just to escape the best he can, using his Ice Novas to deny mobility his Frost Nova, his Pet Nova. Just Nova the targets, save up some damage when they do run away like this. Now Morrow has an opportunity. Now that Mei Line's back, Morrow just has to focus on survival, let Blizzo do, deal most of the damage, and Morrow can just try to avoid as much as possible, dropping down the Blizzard, dropping down the Frozen Orb so he can kite. And Blizzo, honestly, he's been doing a really good job with his Tiger's Loss on Morrow. If Morrow drops a Kona Cold, that's going to force Sunki and Mei Line to be really snared. And with the Tiger's Loss, Morrow can potentially get away. Hello and welcome, StarCraft fans tuning in and anybody else as well we're in the middle of a series in the upper bracket between the titan team wildcard gaming but we were here our giant slayers taking down two giant teams in tournaments so far although now on the ropes with wildcard gaming in a 2-0 lead and looking to assert dominance and advance to face method black in an upper bracket final that will be legendary finally pressure for we were here as maro and blizzo dip low looney activates innervate making all of his heals free at a critical moment to restabilize, but he needs to get those casted spells out as soon as possible. Mana still even, at least relatively, sort of moving into the late game and closer to dampening. Gallon needs to be the X Factor for his team. If he activates Wave of the Crane, he can boost his damage and maybe add just enough to find a kill. So let's see if Gallon can do it. They're on the ropes here against Wildcard Gaming. Yep, Marl's still not forced into one ice block during this game, and Looney's still sitting on that iron bark. It is looking good for them. We were here. They need to try to find some pressure. Barely winning on mana. Actually, not winning on mana. But Marl into the first ice block, overlapped with the iron bark from Looney. That's a lot of key defensive cooldowns from Wildcard Gaming. Sunaki's going to have his touch of death coming up very shortly. If they, they can get that rolling with the metamorphosis of Mayline, they could potentially force out the second ice block from Marl, or maybe even take him down. All right, Blizzo, he's leading the charge for the team. Nice counter spell by Morrow, good teamwork. Gallon forced his hand to activate Way of the Crane to save his team rather than get aggressive, and he's being denied on it by that Ring of Peace. Gallon can't connect. Sunaki is still low. Gallon basically wasting mana and getting no true value out of that Way of the Crane, putting Le Looney even further ahead. Dampening just started. That's going to reduce healing over time, making things incredibly difficult for either side. Mayline finally doing his job and denying Looney from regenerating his mana off the back of that drink. Tons of damage here on tomorrow. This switch onto the Demon Hunter definitely paying its weight in gold. Obviously much more mobile than that Death Knight counterpart. And Mayline leads the charge here with Metamorphosis Pop dealing devastation. And this is the most pressure we've seen from We Are Here. They should have picked this composition in game number two. They're just dominating. Morrow's second ice block forced within seconds of Looney's Iron Bark. Mana completely evened out. And We Were Here stay in this fight. Yeah, this is looking good. Morrow's going to really struggle with the amount of uptime Mayline and Sunaki are able to have, especially at this point in dampening. Ring of Peace gets dropped out once again, forcing Morrow into the Demon Hunter and the Windwalker. Full Polymorph now on Galoon. Sunaki actually has no defensives left, so he is a pressure point for We Were Here. If Wildcard Gaming can find the damage, Looney's sneaking away for a drink once again, but he needs to be careful. He's having a difficult time keeping Morrow up, but Morrow doing a really good job kiting, getting away. Finally, Mayline reconnects, but Looney got so much mana mana in that exchange. If he can top off Morrow, this is going to be looking good for Wildcard. This is no longer a game of mana. It's a race against the clock. Kill Morrow or run out of mana and die. The team of We Were Here have a couple more punches to throw, but after that, they are going to run out of steam. Looney keeps him in a chokehold with constantly resetting his mana on these drinks. Suniki being pushed over at the moment. Gallon going for a drink of his own, but not able to. He's afraid of Suniki going down. He's instead going to come back to the team. Trade Life Cocoon now maybe more safely sit down, but Blizzo is right there to deny it if he needs to. He's not able to even attempt it. 
Thune repositions. Morrow needs another three minutes before an ice block. If Mayline and Tsuni could just stay on target, I'm not sure if Looney can really heal through the amount of damage that's available. Yeah, what I want to see is they force out the Iron Bark, and that's Galoon's opportunity to use that way of the crane to get aggressive with his team. Blizzo getting a nice leg sweep on Tsuniki. He actually preemptively uses the touch of Karma to stay alive. Now Morrow's going to get all that damage redirected onto him. Touch of Death activated on Tsuniki as well. He uses the Fortifying Brew to deny the damage. And then now all three members are looking to get on top of Morrow and get some damage rolling, but unfortunately not able to find it. Blizzo gets turned two, taking a little bit of pressure as well. Looney with the Innervate is able to top off his team quite easily, almost at 20% dampening. Tsuniki has burned through all his defensives. Galoon, he still has his trinket, his life cocoon, way of the crane. And like I said, at this point, this is when I want to see Galoon get hyper aggressive with the way of the crane. This is their opportunity to win the game. No ice block available. No anything from Looney as well. No iron bark. So this is a great time for them to take down wildcard gaming. Oh, Morrow with an escape. Blizzo supports. Good Tiger's Lust granting Morrow more mobility, but even still, Temporal Shield a couple seconds away from going off and healing Morrow back to likely full health. Morrow resets. Suniki caught in the stun with one second. One second? Do they have enough damage to get the kill? No. Mayline denies it, but Ring of Peace knocks Suniki out of the defense. Suniki on the run here as Wildcard Gaming are match points. Looking to close. Blizzo leads the charge here. Looney tossing out Solar Rast adds just a little bit of extra damage, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough here as Suniki holds on. Yeah, leg sweep on Blizzo. Very nicely done. Galoon should be able to top him off here, but he's basically has no mana left, and all pressure on Morrow has faded. If Morrow can hold on for another minute, he's going to have two ice blocks available. That's going to be so massive for wild card gaming, but it might not come down to that. Looney's almost completely out of mana. I don't know if he has the time to actually go away, escape, and land any more drinks in this match. Temporal Shield gets used by Morrow to deny some of the damage. Galoon rolling over, trying to keep the heals up. We were here. They're not doing too bad in terms of defensives. And I still think Marl's the one that's in the most trouble. He needs another 45 seconds. If he can make it to that point, he's actually looking good. But I'm not sure if that's 45 seconds that he's got to his name. Blizzo trying to stall and get aggressive at the same time. Life Cocoon will trade equivalently, though, for that damage as Galon stabilizes the team once again. Mana equalizes, and we've seen the start of the tournament. Mistweavers and Shaman's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Druid Mana. The only way the Druids are actually staying in the fight is by drinking constantly. So if they can deny Looney from resetting this mana once again, maybe they stay in the fight. Touch of Death currently activates. Suniki uses Touch of Karma aggressively to redirect that damage tomorrow. If Suniki and Mayline can stay on target, he's going to be taking huge pressure. He only needs 10 more seconds, 9 more seconds to stay in the fight. 8, 6 more. Looks like he's managed to buy it here as he manages to scrape away 3 more seconds too. Blizzo gets swapped to. He makes a trade to stay in the fight, but Morrow's done it. He's made it to the finish line. He's got 2 ice blocks to his name. Gallon has no mana and Suniki has no more answers. He is now incredibly far on the back foot. Crowd control initiated. We were here looking to close. Morrow just needs to not be greedy. He has both of his ice blocks. Doesn't want to get too low. Looney really doesn't have mana to stabilize him, but Morrow kiting away with the Tiger's Lust gets caught into the fell eruption. Morrow still just has to kite away. Blizzo needs to take down Suniki. Looney actually looking for a drink. Might opt to trade out one of those ice blocks for Looney to regenerate a lot of his mana. Galloon actually escaped for a drink as well, I believe, regenerating some of his. Life Cocoon gets traded out. Both teams playing very well defensively and offensively here. That 34% dampening is going to be coming more difficult for both of these healers to actually keep their teammates alive. And Marl, with the amount of uptime Suniki and Mayline have, it's going to be looking scary for him. Looney got another reset on his mana off the back of that drink. It's still match point, but Blizzo is really the only vulnerability for way we're here. I'd maybe like to see a swap to him readily of soon if not really this is not looking too good they go after Morrow again but temporal shield is going to bounce him back into the fight so easily they have looney locked down in crowd control but i would love to see them just switch to blizzo fist of fury suniki opts to use touch of karma to redirect that damage back into Morrow. his touch of karmas have been on point Morrow's taking huge pressure as a result Looney tries to hold on with just Iron Bar, but there's the switch to Blizzo. He needs two more seconds. He needs one more second. He manages to stay in it. Now Suniki could be on the ropes. Blizzo ducks around the corner. Gallon's locked down in crowd control. Fist of Fury from Blizzo. He gets incapacitated. Suniki really outplaying Blizzo here, redirecting, installing it out as long as possible. But now Touch of Death available. Gallon responds, but Life Cocoon isn't that large here, deep into dampening. And Blizzo's still on the back foot. Looney doesn't have anything to keep him going. How is he going to do it. His mana is almost completely burned out. There's nothing left. Blizzo's looking like he's going to fall. We were here. The giant killers looking to take down another here on match points. Blizzo just trying to stay in the fight a tad bit longer, and Looney somehow managing to do it. 
Yeah, Blizzard doing an excellent job with his kiting, with his turbo fist to stay alive. Now it's up to Morrow to sort of orchestrate this game and get their team a kill. Mayline gets caught into the polymorph. Frozen Orb does get dropped. Suniki, no touch of karma left. Fist of Fury is used, but with the darkness, that's going to be preventing all of that incoming damage. But that's one more tool we were here does not have available any longer. Galoon has enough mana with his manatee for one more way of the crane. Can they push Blizzo over? They go back tomorrow. I think it might be a little bit of a mistake with both ice blocks left. I feel like Blizzle's way more vulnerable in this situation. Morrow gets interrupted, forced into the ice block. He has the cold snap. He has an ice barrier. Has to hold on 30 more seconds for that second ice block. All right, they're going to try and counter aggress, but Sunuki has the answers. Morrow really now on hypothermia is a liability for his team at 47% dampening. Neither healer has any mana left in the tank. The cooldowns are dwindling down. There's not much left on either side, but the giant killers look to take down another as Morrow tries to blink to safety. Ring of Peace holds him in place. Frozen Orb, no, Sunuki, it was his Ring of Peace. Now reconnects. Looney tries to reposition, but he's got no mana. He just simply can't heal. Morrow has to ice block. Now they switch their attention to Blizzo. Things are becoming overwhelming for Looney with both targets in trouble. We were here looking to try and close it out, but Mar manages to stall for one more second if this temporal shield manages to go off he's going to catch a tiny bit of a heal Suniki actually blows the rest of his defense we could be seeing a cross kill here shortly but Maro will be the one falling first as we were here strike blood in this series against wildcard gaming will take it all the way to a game five if they lose they drop down to face elimination we were here we're looking like they were out of cards there in this series but managed to pull it together and keep a point on the board. They need to win two more games in a row. Wildcard Gaming can make an adaptation later in the series if they want to compositionally, but this one does seem to make the most sense, especially on the map that they have currently selected. Blizzo leading the charge for his team. Looks like he's gonna be gunning down Suniki, who opts to run into the room and try and lock Blizzo out, but he misses, and now Blizzo is inside Suniki's room and dealing a lot of damage. Nice incapacity on the Fist of Fury, reversing the pressure in favor. Gowlin has to save Suniki. Nikki. Another ring of peace locks Blizzo in the room, and I guess this is going to be the strategy of the double monk is to try and lock Blizzo in his room and time out, but <laughs> it's kind of just a cheeky play. I'm not sure if it's going to actually result in anything meaningful. Yeah, temporal shield used by Maro should deflect a lot of this incoming damage. It's in good thorns there from Luni as well, redirecting some damage over on the Suniki and May line. Uh, uh, Blizzo's actually playing grapple weapon in this game. That's an interesting adaptation, so it has a little bit more defense for uh, Morrow, he's gonna be able to disarm Malon and really avoid some of that damage whenever he opts to use it. You can also remove a lot of the uh, leech healing from the Demon Hunter. If he's unable to attack, he can't heal. So potentially a mind game meta move by Blizzo to try and counteract that Demon Hunter pick. Fist of Fury come flying, but now interrupted by Mayline's Fell Eruption, and Mayline looking to get aggressive here with that Eye Beam, although Frost Nova it up and unable to connect. Suniki decides to abort the mission, portal back out of line of sight, maybe actually even now go aggressive towards Looney, because Looney managed to sneak in there aggressively, getting a Cyclone, not able to find any sort of punish, though, on the back of it, and... I feel like it's unlikely we see Looney go for Cyclones. Look at his mana. That just cost a whole lot of mana for a whole lot of nothing. So I don't think he's going to be doing that again anytime soon. Looney's most effective strategy is to stay as far away from the fight as possible, constantly reset, look for Prowl drinks to reset his mana, and then extend a kill later into dampening. If he goes for these offensive plays, it's just too costly with no value, at least before dampening. I want to see Looney not making these aggressive moves. He's still looking for Cyclones. Maybe if, if he can get enough, actually, could close the game. Suniki getting bursted, protects himself with Ring of Peace. Blizzo uses Ring of Peace to knock Suniki back, but it's not enough. Blizzo not able to fully connect. Now he gets line of sight. It's Suniki throwing the game like he did on Blades Edge Arena. Barely coming in line. So he's trying to fake cast the counter spell. He's not finding it. Now he's in a polymorph, and Suniki's positioning. He might just throw this series. Yeah, he gets fully bashed by Looney. Wildcard Gaming looking to close out this game. Touch of Death was used. Galoon, if he gets out of the crowd control, he does have the cocoon if he needs to use it the life cocoon a very valuable misweaver defensive cooldown puts up a huge shield that absorbs a lot of incoming damage Loon opting not to use it just yet but Suniki could still be in trouble there it is the green shield the life cocoon it's a big defensive cooldown that wildcard gaming was able to pull out yeah now Gallon actually has the mana advantage over Looney surprisingly but we've seen that and Looney likely needs to just look for resets and in the position that currently is set on this match it should be very easy for him to do so the entire enemy team is pinned down together behind the pillar 
Looney actually just jumping in front of his opponents and playing a tad bit more aggressively looking for these Cyclones, but that could cost him the mana advantage later in the game, so he's choosing to take a crowd control uh, lead, but a mana hit later on. So far, it's not paid off entirely. Ring of Peace denying the defense of Darkness. Well done by Blizzo. Looney takes that opportunity to jump in and crowd control the enemy healer. Suniki alone and vulnerable in this position. Maledix flies in as well. Galun now into another Cyclone. Looney looking to carry the team aggressively, but the chain has ended. Galun can start healing here in one more second and with Live Cocoon absorbing the rest of the hits. Maybe not enough. Full Polymorph by Maru. Great crowd control chain. The defense of Live Cocoon has now faded, although Touch of Karma is available. Having to use it at the same time would be devastating. Looney getting a lot of Cyclones. Very well timed, but his mana at an expense. Polymorph, 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 Cyclone. Good chain here by Wildcard Gaming. They're basically juggling Galoon like juggling balls. And if they can keep it going, it may be enough to take down the kill. With that Fortified Brew activated, Zunaki is taking a lot of reduced damage and manages to stay alive. Yeah, definitely <laughs> he managed to stay alive. Looney now sitting down in stealth and Rich having a heart attack, <laughs> laughing as loud as he can. But Looney didn't get much mana there, and this is definitely a risky play coming in from Wildcard Gaming when they are looking for these Cyclone plays. Looney's going to have to try to regenerate some of that mana by sneaking away and getting drinks, and that's going to come down to Blizzo and Morrow finding a lot of defensive plays, doing a good job with their crowd control. Looney now sitting himself, going to be getting out of combat, sipping on some water and regenerating his mana, which is exactly what he needs to do. Galloon doing the same here as mana is going to equalize itself across both teams with dampening just starting. No real advantage there. And we were here are starting to show signs of life in this series against the Giants wildcard gaming. Curious to see if they can actually pull this back with a 3-0 reverse sweep to stay in the upper bracket against Method Black. Blizzo overextends. Caught in the stun lock here in game number two. Opting to overlap defensive cooldowns in a bit of a panic attack for wildcard gaming. There's now an opening to take Blizzo out. There definitely is. Blizzo with no trinket, no touch of karma. Going to be very vulnerable in this situation. But Marl seems to be the target of choice still. It's good for We Were Here at all times to be at least attacking Morrow a little bit. That's going to slow down his damage output, limit the amount of blizzards he can get out, and frost bolts, which limits his icicles and procs and frozen orbs, and just his damage overall. Galoon now gets interrupted, but with a Cyclone on May lined, actually gets swapped nicely done by Looney on the way of the crane. If Galoon can get off any healing here, though, he will top off his team very easily. And now we were here. They're looking to get aggressive with this, but Morrow reading the situation perfectly, gets the polymorphs on May line, drops down the blizzard, should be completely fine. That was a nice attempt by We Were Here, but it just got shut down by Looney Cyclones. All right, in this position, Maylined is the opening target for Wild Card Gaming. Let's see if Blizzo can execute for a kill here. Looney jumps in, but gets denied on his crowd control for a few moments, but it may not be enough. We see the grapple weapon taking Maylined's weapon away to deny some leech healing on his part, but Blur was traded ultimately. Now Looney locked down in leg sweep. Everybody locked down in leg sweep. Morrow breaks out of it with that human racial blinking to safety. Ring of Peace by Gallon denies Looney from connecting for a bash, but he exposed himself midfield to Morrow. Now both Morrow and Looney on top of Gallon. He has a rough choice to make here. Is he just going to trade the cooldowns? It may not even be enough. This map selection perfect for wildcard gaming. Mayline just totally out in the open, taking tons of damage, trying to kite, but it's quite difficult to kite Blizzo on that Windwalker Monk. Darkness gets dropped. No ring of peace available to knock Mayline out, and that added defense should be enough for Gallon to start stabilizing, but now caught into a Polymorph. Yep, full Polymorph on Gallon. Mayline in a lot of trouble moving in, trying to get some leech healing in that metamorphosis. Blizzo denies with the Fists of Fury, and now Mayline still trying to kite away. Ray of Frost gets channeled out by Morrow, interrupt from Sunki who will deny some of that Frost Mage damage, but once again, the Frozen Orb gets dropped down, and the Blizzard, the Freezing Rain talent from Morrow. Every time he drops that Frozen Orb, he gets a free instant cast Blizzard he can drop down, and that's going to be doing additional damage and also help reset his next Frozen Orb. So I like the talent choice here. They're good against double melee if you're being trained down. I think it's smart by Morrow. It's going to help him get out damage in the long run. Yep. Looney running Thorns as well, activating that. And if any melee attacker attacks the target with Thorns, they take some percentage of health and damage as well. So you have to take the gamble to attack the target with that that you want to try and kill. But if you don't, you just take a lot of damage in exchange. 
mana in favor of Looney now at 20% dampening as it gets d higher and higher. It's going to become increasingly difficult for either side to keep their team in the fight. Of course, we were here are on match point. If Wildcard Gaming win this game, they will advance in the upper bracket to face off against Method Black. They looked strong in the first two games, but Mayline switching over to this Demon Hunter has seemed to throw a wrench into the plans of Wildcard Gaming. Zuniki falls behind, forced to trade a lot of his defensive arsenal here at 22% dampening. Grapple weapon, not very effective on a Windwalker Monk. I would have much rather seen that used onto Mayline during an I-beam attempt. It seems like Blizzo's pick on that grapple weapon is he's not 100% sure how he wants to use it. Well, it is good for one thing, and that's to deny the turbo fist. So if Blizzo wants to get aggressive on Suniki, he can actually deny that 100% parry and keep him uh, with his fist down. You can keep up that pressure. So not necessarily the worst thing, but I do agree. Normally on the Demon Hunter, it's going to be a, a lot more effective. It is an interesting talent choice indeed. Blizzo still is the first target over on Asunaki at around 26% dampening. Things are going to be coming scary for both of these healers. With how aggressive Looney's playing, he really has to be looking for these drinks constantly. But I think in dampening, this crowd control over on the Galoon is going to pay off. In the meantime, though, Blizzo getting low. He ports away. Gladiator Safeguard does proc. Doesn't want to have to use his Touch of Karma just yet. Maylined all over him, though. Looney expending a lot of mana. And I think Suniki and Mayline pressuring down Blizzo, especially when Looney's looking for these drinks, is going to be really important in the late game. If they can keep Galen locked in crowd control, Suniki doesn't have many cooldowns to stay alive. Looney tries to get the chain going, but gets denied. Galen rolls to safety, now able to connect some soothing mists here shortly to stabilize Suniki and stay in the fight. Mana basically completely even here at 30% dampening. And we were here, our Looking like they could potentially swing this entire series back in their favor. Mara with only one more ice block. Deeper into dampening. Looney won't be able to respond. Maybe if Blizzo throws by making an overextension, he could go down. Looks like he's going to go for an all-in. He doesn't seem to care. He wants to take Galen out as soon as possible. But Ring of Peace denies at least a tad bit of damage. They go for the Maledict from Looney as well to take Galen out. Now is he going to respond here? Dipping fairly low. Deep into dampening. Blizzo pins him against the wall for a few more seconds. T way of the Crane is forced. Blizzo now trying to retreat away from that defense, but Way of the Crane is very expensive, so that push, regardless, is costly for We Were Here. Yeah, it was a weird misplay from Blizzo. He actually just ported right on top of his port, so really didn't get too much value there. Mara with the Temporal Shield. Double stun onto him. Might have to actually trade out the Ice Block. It was a good Temporal Shield. He's able to hold on with the Iron Bark coming in from Looney at 36% dampening. Things are getting so scary for both of these teams. Looney does have a mana lead right now, but Galoon, look at him. He's across the entire map you might be able to sit down and regenerate a huge amount of mana this is going to be big for we were here especially moving this late into dampening Morrow, if he's forced into his second ice block this is not looking good for wildcard gaming i mean at this point they may need to switch compositions there hasn't really been a huge opening for wild card gaming and actually they're slowly but surely losing the mana advantage this demon hunter switch is definitely valuable for we were here 40 percent dampening this could be the second and maybe final ice block of the game for Mara as he tries to counter pressure while under a ton of pressure himself both suniki and Mara, the target of choice here maledix flies in towards suniki Gallon is crowd controlled. Uh -oh. Mayline is crowd controlled. It's a three on one. Blizzo on top of Suniki and looking to close. Gladiator safeguard protecting him for now. Blizzo ports away from the way of the crane of Gallon. Good reaction time by Blizzo. Denying a bit of extra damage and an immediate top off. But the mana may now be in favor of Looney as he's managed to sneak across the map. And this is exactly what you want to do as a healer. If your team has pressure and the enemy team is running away, you can sneak off and drink or generate mana for a kill later on. But he didn't get that much off the back of it. May lined with a good denial. Yeah, May lined on that Demon Hunter with the Spectral Sight. Can actually find the Druid. Suniki getting caught in the bash with no defensives left. And Wild Card is looking at aces as they close out this series 3-1. to one. He did it. Think the feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth. 